All right, so it is 11.30 Saturday morning. Got a book review. So we got The Art of Star Wars, The Mandalorian. Phil Stozak and Doug Chang. So this is a nice hard cover. Let me show you the... That is the hard cover without the, the jacket. And there's Moff Gideon on the back. So... Yeah, watch this on your TV. Straight up art run. So, this contains everything from season one of The Mandalorian. So, if you were expecting season two teasers, huh, you are in for a disappointment. So, yeah. Table of contents. <clears throat> But let's switch to the back really quick so I can show you. All right, here we go. That's everyone involved in the projects and whatnot. So there you go. So back to the front. There we go. So. When you get this book, the artist names will be at the bottom and labeled so you know what they are. But yeah, so season one, this was good stuff. This is a really good book. I like this. I may or may not buy it. I don't know. There's that. There's Mando. And there's the Who's Who. This is everybody involved in the projects as well. So you can check them out and whatnot. This is just everybody from season one, so. Yeah. I mean, season one was pretty good. I like this. Like, the artwork for this is great. And, you know, they give, you know, a bunch of info on it and stuff. But, yeah, the artwork is phenomenal in this. I like it. Ryan Church is great. Uh, Ralph McQuarrie. Tons of two-page spreads in this as well. There'll be small ones, big ones. Pretty much all kinds of goodies. And that's homage to uh, Clint Eastwood. I forget which movie, though. But, you know, they break down, you know, the different types and styles they were going with in bringing Din to life. And then the final product of what he ended up being. Which is really nice. Uh, that's why I love concept art. Because I brought that up in uh, another book I read. Because every time you see concept art... You know, it's usually brought back for something in the future. Ah, I did it for the art of Star Trek. So, they broke them down in stages. And this is a 250-page book. So, try to do this in one video. Did it before. <laughs> See if <laughs> lightning strikes twice. Interior of the Razor Crest, which is now destroyed. Bummer, but, eh. Oh, well. So, yeah, Ryan Church made this ship, and, you know, from the engines, you can tell it's from Trek, because he worked on Trek as well. Another two-page. And the aliens and stuff. I do love how they make molds and stuff. That's the best part about a lot of this, is that you know, you have Dave Filoni's work that goes into this. You have Church. You have Osman. Just so many memorable artists and popular ones that have been with various franchises over the years and have contributed their work to some amazing projects. <clears throat> so, yeah, I love it. <laughs> There we go. 
And everything's labeled, which is really nice and helpful. That's a huge deal. Because I know most art books tend to not do that like they should, but some do. Or most used to not do that, but now they do. And there's a layout for the area, Ice Town. I like the Wee Quay, they're awesome. <laughs> and various trooper designs they had. I always like the different designs of troopers, those are fun. Different Mandalorians they have. And there's, uh, oh, I forget her damn name. She has a name, I don't remember it. There's the Beskar. And different versions of the armor before they settled on this one. It's a pretty cool tool. That's a nice toolkit. That's nice too. <laughs> oh, so many different versions to choose from. But what draws me to this book? Well, one, I like being able to get the books new from my library, so I was surprised when this came in right away. Because usually it's about a good, meh, month wait on getting new stuff because it just came out. So, yeah. But yeah, this book is really good. I really enjoy it. Uh, if you don't like Star Wars or you don't like The Mandalorian, I understand that. I always say that because not everybody gets sucked into the amazement and wonder of Star Wars. Some people just see it as space wizards and all that bullshit. I get that. I get tired of Star Wars sometimes because people just ugh, niggle and moan and cry too much. Cuey and his blurred and they're dead. They're dead and gone. <laughs> so and plus I, like I said many times, I do these book reviews because most people, you know, they'll give you like the once over of the book and it'll, the video will be exactly eight minutes long where I'm at right now. And then they'll be like, yeah, you should go buy this book because it's got so many great sketches and shit. And they'll show you a couple screenshots, twirl the book around, all that crap. <laughs> Me, I give you the full run through and everything. I show you all the shit in the book, all the art. Because it makes sense. You know, would you rather, you know, just see a short ass vid where they don't give you anything? Or would you like the full in depth look? where you can make up your mind for yourself. That would have been a smarter choice. But, eh. Oh, well. I remember when that came out. That was like... I forget where the hell I saw. I think it was on Behanced. Or Behance. I forget. One of them. Dead baby Yoda. He's gonna die. Yep, that boy's gonna die. Dead baby Grogu. <laughs> I like the storyboard sketches the most because you get to see the roughness of what it's going to be and then you get to see the final product and you're like, wow, you can really appreciate the lines, the craftsmanship of it, and the details and stuff. So how am I liking The Mandalorian so far? It's alright, it's good. I'm not a fan of Fett. I'm not a fan of the kid. Uh, Ahsoka was cool. The story's good. I just hope they stick to the story of him, you know, getting back and finding his clansmen and stuff. You know, finding his clan and whatnot. That's the important part. 
I don't want it to turn into a thing of force users galore in the series, because then that'll just bog him down and turn him into a side quest, which is stupid. Uh. So, that's how I feel. Oh shit, this is that. Yeah, that was in, um... Fuck, what book was that in? That was in one of the other books. I think that was in, um... Fuck, what was that in? Oh, the characters guide. The new essential guide to characters for Ver Verger. Yeah! Fuck yeah! Awesome! That's cool. Sand crawler. Uh, what's the one thing I really like the most about this artwork? Definitely the oils, the oil paintings they do, and the uh, hand-drawn work. Yeah, the oil painting effects, the digital effects, and, you know, just the rough cell shading of it. That's beautiful. This is cell shading right here. So... <clears throat> but yeah like the Mandalorian's good it's just I hope they you know veer back on track cause everybody I've seen so many fucking twatter posts saying like oh Thrawn's gonna be there and Luke's gonna pick the baby up and I'm like get the fuck out of here and Luke's gonna make an appearance <laughs> like no, he's not. Because even if he did, it would be so stupid. Why? Because if he picks the kid up, then we already know where the hell the kid went. He died during the Temple Massacre. <laughs> so, purpose defeated. <laughs> but, eh. I digress. <laughs> It's really bitchin' art. <laughs> All four old Jawas, they crack me up. The heck, I hope we actually get more mythos with him. Because there's so much to love about this. And all the different armor types they have and such. You know, there's, there's plenty of room for uh, future Mandalorians to show up. I like the Heavy Mando. He was a lot of fun. I still haven't gotten the Black Series figure of him yet because I'm saving money. But this is what I really like. This is nice because they give you the whole layout of the area in terms of scale. And they show you how to get through Navarro and whatnot. So, you know, if you want to write a story about Navarro, that will help you out. So, that way you know what you're looking at. Or maybe you even live in an area that's shaped like that. So that's even cooler. <clears throat> oh, that's right. They're coming up with what I like. Yeah. That hairstyle I like the most. The short. The short with the arm tat. That looks really good. Because I was like, damn, she would look really good with short hair. But I like her hair either way. And I know people have issues with uh, Gina, but people need to grow up, <laughs> honestly. Like, if you can't separate actor from role, then you have issue. <laughs> Farms. Nice. Yeah, I wholeheartedly enjoy this book. Like, I love the artists. That's what I'm in it for. You know, look at the lighting for that. You know, and then the basic layout for that. It's it's so pretty. So many good compositions in this book, and you can't go wrong with it. I'll show you the trees. There you go. 
the water coloring, just the basic, all the different styles that come together and make something amazing. That's what I love. Man, look at them feet. They're so cool. It's little details that stick out to me that I enjoy. Good to see the Klaatuinians. That made me happy. Because I had no idea what they looked like. Because I remember when I read, listened to... Um, what the fuck was that? It was Fate of the Jedi. I don't remember which book it was. But... I do remember them bringing up the Klaatuinians. And I didn't know what they looked like. Because by that point... We didn't have any pictures of them at the time. But now we got pictures, so I know what they look like. I should I have fire? That looks really good. It's gorgeous. Little storyboard for it. What is the best part of The Mandalorian? Or oh, I should say of this book. Definitely his helmet styles. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, these helmets are awesome as fuck. It just, all the, all the concept art, period, is good. I love the concepts. And then how everything was just brought to life. Hmm. If you don't like art books, you won't enjoy this at all. However, if you are a sci-fi buff and you do like art from sci-fi, then yeah, it's good for your collection. Because there are some people out there that are like that. Funny, but it's true. Um, surprisingly, I don't think Fennec was in this book. Which kind of baffled me. And the Tatooine docking day. Oh, that's pretty. So. At least most of these two-page spreads that I can say, the middle part isn't as fucked as most other ones are, because I talked about that before. Oh, there's Fennec. My bad. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't remember if she was in this or not, but there she is. I really do like how they really expanded on this. That's the best part. I mean, they give you layouts for all locations. That's one. They give you amazing detail work on everybody in here. That actually looks like Dexter Weeks' work, but it's not, which sucks, because Dexter Weeks is a hell of an artist. <clears throat> church yeah. plus a lot of these if you find them digitally they make great wallpapers easily yeah a lot of this yeah this is the cell shading parts yeah that's cell shading yeah You know, four and there we go. That's good. Security droids. Hallway. Merc Tyler. And we're nearing the end. Looks like it's gonna be done in one video. Nice. <laughs> Happy about that. 
But yeah. I don't think they, yeah. Previous Star Wars art books never went into full detail about this kind of shit. Nah. They didn't. There's my boy. Giancarlo Esposito. I love him. You really want to get to know him, watch him in his older films, and also Homicide, Life on the Street. Damn good show. Yeah, definitely. So... Hmm. That's the best part. They explain how he brought the process to life, but which is different because I like that, but they never um like the detailing about Navarro and like this kind of shit. That's never been in a Star Wars art book. That's new for this. And I like that a lot. It really makes it unique. So, I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. Because, shit. I like the different styles in this. The Nick Toes. Maybe we'll see more of them in the future. I don't know. Yeah, when I saw that they had this art book, I thought it was going to be... Like, when they advertised the art of the Mandalorian, I thought it was going to have just the screenshots from the end of every episode. That's what I thought it was going to be. I didn't know it was going to be a full breakdown of season one. Still, blessing in disguise. And I like the TIE Fighter, too. I like how it, I, that's smart that the wings fold. Because it makes more sense versus having them, you know, just stand there. Moff Gideon and his Death Troopers. This I need to find to make it my wallpaper eventually. Best episode in season one, the kid getting punched. That felt so good. <laughs> and people hated it, but it was so funny. <laughs> That's beautiful. I'd like to see this done in charcoal. Honestly, like a charcoal rubbing, that would be cool. But, eh. Let's see. <clears throat> I hope she comes back. I like the armor. I like all the different Mandos, because it's like shit. They should all come back, but I don't know. That's version two, and then they went with version version one. That's called a keel boat. Boat droid. I think what makes Mandalorian nice is that it's original and does its own thing without needing OT reliance, honestly. Like, if you were to cut out, for me, if you were to cut out Fett, if you were to cut out the kid, it would be a solid series. 
Honestly, it really would be. Let me go in on this a little bit. I'm almost touching the page. That's how deep I am with this. There's storyboards. Him burnt smoking. Two page attack. Oh, we're done. <gasps> cool. And then there's the index of everything. And then the Isle of Brinson and two page fight. Damage. Huckleberry Dark Saber. And then Moff Gideon standing tall. That's another good one. But Church, I love him. And this one of Gideon. So that actually let's see if I can get on that. Yeah, it's as good as it goes. So that was Art of the Mandalorian. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. So I will be back later with reviews. Stay tuned.